Hey, so normally on this channel, we do stuff around businesses using Airtable and Zapier automation. But in this instance, we're gonna go off script and we're gonna start talking about how you might plan a bachelor party or bachelorette party using Airtable and Zapier. Now in this video, we're gonna go step by step through the template we built, why the different parts exist, all the different integrations you'll need, and how you can get everything organized in one place. So if that's of interest to you, stick around. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses get organized and automated using Airtable and Zapier. Now in this video, as I said, we're gonna actually be not talking about a business use case, but instead about a personal use case. So if you need some help with a bachelor party, definitely check this video out. Now, I'll just go ahead and get started. Go ahead and jump into my screen here. Now, first things first, this is a quick Airtable base that we put together. This is uh, something that we will share in the uh, video description. So if you would like access to this template, uh, please check the links below. Now, really all we're doing here is uh, tracking two different pieces of data. We have our invitees, those people who we're inviting to the bachelor party, and then of course our schedule, and this is the events that we have. So let's go through these tables one at a time. Uh, so first things first, we've got our invitees. Uh, and some of these data points, we're gonna assume that a certain amount of data is already known. And that is you know, the name, the phone number, the email, right? So you can see some examples here where we've got a first name and a last name. We're bringing in an email address. Uh, of course, these are fake example emails. And then a phone number. And then we have a ready to send checkbox. And this is what's gonna trigger our automation. So we've, uh, we've built this to make sure that it gives us an opportunity to get all of the data points that we want, email, phone number, name, all of that in place before the email triggers. So once we're ready to send out the email that says, hey, uh, we'd like to invite you, uh, that's what we do right here. Now, quick note here, we're gonna be using Zapier to send this email and they do have a restriction on how many emails can go through in a short period of time. So I would recommend you know, uh, coming to this in pieces getting data in there, maybe five at a time or so, and sending out five emails, come back an hour later or a day later and do it again. Uh, you just don't wanna uh, spam Zapier too uh, quickly because uh, it does have a restriction on how many emails it'll send out automatically. Um, so assuming then that you know, you've gotten to this point, then the, we, what we want is for the attendees or the invitees to be able to then access their information and see it and confirm their phone number, confirm all these things, and also RSVP to the event. So we've got some extra bonus questions here for them again, like, are you attending, yes or no? Are there any notes, like any extra things? Uh, tell us about your availability, like maybe you can't make it to all of the events, but you can make it to some of them. Um, obviously, we also need to share with them what the date and time is, what we're doing on this event, and then need to get their dietary restrictions if you're planning meals ahead of time. So these types of questions, and this is the part where you can come in and kind of customize these things. And then lastly, we're getting to the, the end part here, and this is where we're gonna use an integration with a software called Form Nano. Now, if you're uh, new to Airtable, you might have already found out that they have a form option, but when you submit a form through the native Airtable app, what happens is every form uh, or, or rather every response to the form will create a brand new record in your table. But this is a unique case because we want people to see existing data, that is their name, email, etc., all of this right here, and then we want them to also have some blank questions as well. And so for this we're going to be using a software called Form Nano. I'm not going to go into full detail on how we build this in Form Nano because we've done that in a previous video, which I will link uh, also below so that you can check that out if you'd like. But what we're really doing is, if I jump into this Form Nano Bachelor Party, I'm gonna to go to the Configure Fields, and we want to give them access to change the information that's in our database. Now the name of these fields has to match exactly to the field name uh, that we have already set up. So you'll see phone number and email and first and last name are all things that we have here. And then we're also going to link to these other tables. So if they have dietary restrictions, we want to give them an option to select. Are they attending? Yes or no. Uh, and this is where they can let us know any other information. Okay, so that's all done in Form Nano. And when we're done with that Form Nano, we can come down here and just submit. And once we've built that out, then we need to grab this link. This link is unique to our form 
and then we're going to add on the record ID for each of the different attendees or invitees and that way each one of them will have their own special place to go to with their information. And so what you'll need to do is just grab this from the equal sign over and you can go ahead and place that in this formula here inside the parentheses. In this example I've already done that and then this formula will automatically update with the record ID. So that makes it a unique link for each person. So if we were to click on this link for each person, it'll take us to a form with that person's information where they can update it and maybe they can change their or they can change their phone number if they need to. They can leave any notes. You can see here that he's already left a note that says can't make dinner but I'll be there for poker. And if he wants to update that, he can. RSVP dietary restrictions, all of this can be updated. And then once submit is clicked, you'll notice if we go back here that that information is automatically updated inside of our invitees table. Okay, so that's the first big step here, getting people that information. Now, from a planning perspective, you also need your unsent guest information. So this is a list of all of those people that you have not yet sent an email to. In this case, if you notice by our all records, we've sent it to everyone already, but I'll go ahead and add a new person here. Say it's myself and we can walk through the steps of what this would look like. All right, so once we have that, this is the information that will be filled out by the coordinator or planner. Then they can come to this unsent guest record and they'll see that there is one record that has not yet been sent. They can click ready to send. And then of course, we're going to build an automation that picks this data up and sends that email. And then from there, they'll have the ability to schedule people. So here's where they can see those people who have RSVP'd, or rather, we should apply a filter here, I suppose, that says uh, that they uh, are planning on attending. So only those people who've said that they will be there. And then this is where you can link them to the different events. Now, in this case, I've put in three fake events. We're having dinner from this time to this time, then playing poker. Uh, back at the uh, suite, which is not yet determined. And then, of course, we'll head out to a club. So in this case, uh, what I've also done is brought in some uh, images, which I drop in here. And the purpose of this is to create the events uh, link. And so now people can very easily see, and this is something we're going to share with them in that email, they can see what we're doing and when we're doing it. That way they can tell if it, there's going to be any kind of scheduling conflict or not. Really nice uh, setup here. This is the gallery type a view. If you're unfamiliar with it, you can check that out here. And so this gives people, you know, uh, the ability to see what we're doing, when we're doing it, and you can bring in other information as well to keep them up to date, like where the street address is. That's a very easy thing to add here so that people all have one source of truth and they know exactly where they need to be and when. So we can go ahead and bring that in and that's all set. Okay, so from here we need to talk about that automation. So we want to send out an email when we click this unsend button and once we're ready to send, we want to send out an email. And so we've built this specific view right here called automation send email and it's waiting for checked boxes. So once a box is checked, that record appears in this view and then it's going to get sent out. So let's go ahead and go back to unsent guest info and I'll go ahead and test this on myself and send that out. All right, so it's removed from this view and we'll see that it's now appearing in this view, which is gonna trigger the automation. So let's go ahead and write that automation. So now we're gonna drop into Zapier. And now the first thing we do is set up a trigger, like so, that triggers off of this base and this table, the invitees table, and it will be sending the automation email. That's easy enough, but let's go ahead and pull in the new information here. This will be the record that I just added there it is. Excellent. Go ahead and continue from there. And now we need to send that email. Now I prefer to send out uh, using Gmail, but you can use another email service provider uh, as well. And here you're going to link it to the email for the person that we picked up in that view. So there we go there. Now moving on down here, we can put whatever you know, subject we need. And specifically, we're going to change this body type to HTML because we're going to embed a few links in here. And I will, of course, take all of this embed code and paste it as well in the description of this video. 
So in here, now we're going to write whatever email we have and you know, just send that out. So in this case, I'm saying, hey Gareth, ready to say farewell to our friend as he bids goodbye to his freedom, join us for his last hurrah uh, on his bachelor party in Vegas. And then what we're gonna do is bring in that specific view. If you remember back here, we had a view on the schedule that is looking at, uh, if I drop into my events, this is the view we wanna share with them so that they can see what different events we have planned for them. So what we do here is we share this view, we grab this URL, just with a quick copy, and you can drop that in, oops, sorry, went ahead, step ahead, you can drop that in right here, in between those quotes. And what they're gonna see is actually just a link, and when they click it, they will be able to see that view. And then the next part we need to do is, of course, share with them the RSVP form, and that's where we're going to embed yet again. And so this little snip of code right here is uh, how we embed that URL. But remember, this URL is unique for every person. And so what we need to do is bring in that specific uh, field, which in this case is called unique link. So make sure to bring your unique link in there as that will be different for every base and every record. And from there, we can go ahead and test this. Let's go ahead and send out a quick test. You'll see I've already tested this, but we send that to Gmail and we got success, so that went out okay. I'll drop into my Gmail here, and let's see if I have a new email. Here it is, Paul's bachelor party. We can drop in, and let's test these links out and make sure they're working. So this is what everyone who you've added to the list is going to receive, an email that says something very similar to this. Of course, put your own spin on it. And we can click here to view the schedule. And so every single person can get access to this view, even though they haven't been added to the database, they're getting a view and they can see where we're going, when we're gonna be there, where, where the event is, and whatever other data points you wanna make sure that they have access to. So that's the first link. And then the second link, we wanna give them the ability to RSVP and update their information in our database. So here I could change this, I could update my email, maybe I need to change my phone number, maybe they have a number wrong, uh, and then we've got whatever various questions here. So are, are they bringing anything? Uh, just myself. Availability. I'll be there for the whole thing. No conflicts. Dietary restrictions. I don't have any. Well, am I attending? Yeah. Looking forward to receiving this uh, email from you, Kevin. Um, and, then, and then right there, you know, they can uh, go ahead and submit their information. Now we can drop back into that database now and the planner, the coordinator, has an updated piece of information. Now the last thing that we need to talk about from the coordinator's perspective is looking at this scheduling. And this is where you'll be able to tie people to the different events. So if I were to increase this row height so that I can read everyone's notes, I can see that Kevin's already said, hey, he can't make the dinner, but he'll be there for poker. So I will not connect him to dinner, but I will connect him to poker and to the nightclub. And in Josh's case, I will connect him to everything here. And clearly, Gareth is ready to party, so he'll be getting connected to everything as well. Now, this is really beneficial because when we jump back into that scheduling view, if we're looking at the records from this perspective, we get a count for all the people at the different parts. And so we can easily know when we're making reservations for the Capitol Grill, we're only gonna make it for two at this point, but we know the nightclub and the Venetian you know, poker game are gonna require three. So I think you get the idea of how all of this works. I realize there's a lot here, but check out the template in the link below, and also definitely go into the uh, Form Nano video if it's your first time using that kind of an integration. Hope all this helps, and let me know any questions you might have. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.